Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the final session of Art and Protest for the year, um, and a very special one for me. Um, I'm here with my friend Jacqueline de Jong, um, who we haven't been able to see each other since the pandemic started, so it's really quite wonderful. Um, and she is going to be talking us through um, some slides that we put together. Um, and then after, after she's done uh, with that, um, we'll have time for questions. And uh, if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask, um, please put those questions in the Q&A um, and don't put them in the chat, but in the Q&A and we will get to them uh, in the second half of, of the hour. Um, so without that, um, I don't think, all I need to say is Jacqueline is um, an amazing, amazing voice for art and always protest. Um, and I can't wait to hear what she has to say about, she's gonna be talking about not only um, the um, 1960s, but also um, what's going on uh, today um, and what she's doing, what she's up to now. So with that, I'm gonna start sharing my screen so I can um, uh, do the slideshow. And Jacqueline, um, you can go ahead and, uh, and uh, start. Well, <laughs> so, so you can say hello, people. I'm Jacqueline. Yeah, I can say hello, people. Hello, people. There will be very little protest tonight, I think. It just depends how it will be going. I hope I'll see the slides. This yeah. one is actually, um, I think it's more the poster. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah, well, there we go. Uh, this photo was made in, I think, 65, and it shows, which is quite funny, behind my back, it, it's me sitting there, it was the place where I made the Situationist Times, which uh, is completely at uh, Baedeker Library of Rare Books and Manuscripts, um, and in the back you can see files, and these files are also at the library which is fantastic because Kevin arranged it. It would go there and I'm very happy that it can be public. So this is around, well, early mid sixties. And it shows a little bit the way I lived in Paris in a very tiny, really tiny apartment. It just had one room and a toilet, which on top was a shower. And the shower, you had to start, sit in the toilet, on the toilet, or, or stand on it to get at least showered. And there was a kitchen, that's the next uh, picture. Perhaps we can show it. No, that's the same one. There you can see a little bit of the paintings I made. Everything was stuck in that one room. And the next, well, and all, yes. And that is the kitchen where I worked as a painter. So the, my day was at that moment, and for many years, it starts in 62 and it goes on until 68, end of 68 in the way. Um, and at that moment, I, during the day, I painted in the afternoons and I worked on the Situationist Times, which I mentioned before, uh, in the mornings. And it was quite a lot of work. So my daily life was like that. And there was not yet very much protest, it had been a lot of protest. Perhaps we have to go to the next picture, um, if possible. Well, that is also, that is the end of the situation is times, which shows the number six, um, which actually uh, has made that it stopped because of economic reasons and whatever happens with magazines like that. And there it's on show at La Une, which was a very important bookshop in Paris. It came out in Paris in 67. Um, perhaps it's a good idea to start talking about what comes next as a picture. And that is the, well, the complete series of the Situationist Times, which I started in opposition to what happened with the Situationist movement. And that is really a protest where we see some pictures of the protest. This is before I got thrown out of the movement. On the contrary, that's the first time I participated at the Congress and the Congress was in London at the ICA. Actually there we got thrown out because of our behavior 
towards the public because we were so arrogant that we just talked talked about the fact what we not the fact the facts what we had been doing talking together and um, uh, uh, a pamphlet was being translated by um, uh, well one of the ex um, situationists everyone got always thrown out by the, in the situationist movement expelled we called it and that was Ralph Romney so the board, the chief of the, well, what you could say, the chief of the situationist movement at that moment, he thought that because he had been expelled, Ralph Romney, the text was not well translated and asked me to look at it. All this happened while the public was waiting. And that was, of course, very impolite. I mean, waiting for us to, to well, to make a performance, you could call it now a performance, to talk about what the ideas of the situationist movement was. But of course, it never came out what our ideas were, because they were sort of secret. And it was also this very arrogant attitude we had towards the people, which was, in a way, in this, I mean, this is 1960. So imagine that um, to give away all the more or less counterculture, revolutionary ideas to the ICA public, which was a very snobby intellectual public, was not such a good idea. So that's why we behaved impolitely. Um, you can see that it was sent from Munich and you see the name De Boer, Sturm, Zimmer and Prem, which uh, Sturm, Zimmer, Prem and, and Prem, and Lothar Fischer were the four members of the Gruppe Spur. And actually through them, which was a very young group of painters, artists, and who lived in Munich and worked in Munich. And through them, I got to know uh, the International Situationist. Also through Jorn, with whom I got very close uh, since 59. But this is really to, to get together for the first time. I, and you can see my address in Amsterdam and I was working in the State Museum um, at this moment. And um, I, um, in a way, and there it really starts for me and it lasts two years. But not only for me, the, all the artists were thrown out, expelled, or they left like Jorn. Um, that made that the situationist movement became a much more political and uh, theoretical movement. And when this um, clash, you could say, happened in 62, I started the Situationist Times. I had announced actually the Situationist Times a year after this CIA Congress to the, to the friends, to the Situationist people in when we were in Brussels uh, together, gathered in Brussels, I suggested to make an English speaking uh, magazine while there was the German one of the Gruppe Spur and there was of course a very important French one made in French. And the Boer asked me and sent me these articles to have them translated in the situation as times to be. But of course, my idea was not at all to have translations from the magazine uh, International Situationist, but to have a completely inventive and quite new magazine, which ended up, of course, that I never put them in. So, well, now we're jumping very fast because then, of course, I didn't, I accepted them, but I never did anything with them, with these texts. Could we go back to the, sorry, Kevin, to these texts, because these texts, although they were very interesting, to have them translated into English would have been, apart from the one on the right side, which, which tells what the derive is, well, the, the, the more important sentences and, and uh, terms that were used in the international situations. But I mean, to have them translated, I thought it was not really necessary because people that were interested in the movement could read French or should read French. And it was also already in the German. But, and I thought it, it was too didactic to, to have this, this translations. Anyway, I never did it. So what I did 
when the group of Spur, these artists, got thrown out of the um, uh, international situationist because so called because of their magazine, which was paid by a capitalist collector who bought yarn paintings, and that's how it could have been how it was paid. Um, and um, when they got expelled, it was the moment that they had a trial, a real trial in Munich against the magazine because the magazine um, was supposed to be pornographic and blasphemic. So it was a very bad moment to expel uh, comrades, you could say, in the terms of situationists. Um, because of that, this trial, we should have supported, or they should have supported them. But what was clear, uh, the boy and his friends, we could say, were against us, the artists. That in 62 became something which was very clear. Although it was an avant-garde art movement, it was much more a political and, um, well, theoretical, sociopolitical movement. At least it became it when the Spur got thrown out, when you are left, and because Spur got uh, got thrown out. Uh, the Nordic, the Scandinavian section, and I were solidarity with Spur and also left the movement. And I did it in a very clear way by starting the magazine and start then writing this article. This is part of the pornographic uh, image of the Gruppe Spur. Um, if you can recognize something pornographic, you're lucky. Uh, and I uh, talk here about, I mean, my talk is about the big fight. And the big fight is between the creative part of the situation as people and the social political part of the situation as people. Um, and uh, the, 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 the whole text, if we can go back, please, to the first, to that. Right? Uh, you can see here what is written. Perhaps you can get it a little bigger. You can see um, that it is a very protest, sort of really protest article and very much protest against the whole mentality of the, um, well, again, social political uh, fighters who, who, who were unsolidary with Mr. Comrades, with the artists, um, with the real, well, let's put it, yes, we could say the real artists, because of course they were also in their way, they were very creative. I mean, the critique on the political practice of the tournament, which tournament is, of course, a very situationist movement, is really that it just changed from uh, avant garde artistic movement to this political movement. And there it became actually famous. It became much more well known after we all left, that's for sure. But so if I could just jump in, I mean, Jacqueline, these are the um, originals of uh, what, what is printed in, in the magazine in, uh, in the first issue. I just want to point that out to people that these are, these are actually very remarkable and um, quite, quite lovely um, pieces. So what you see in the in the magazine will look a little bit different than these. Yes, they do. <laughs> well, the originals you have to, Bainica has the originals, but I mean, the, in print it looks different, but it's not so different. It was printed on a rolled up print, which is a very primitive print, but it looks very much like the real stuff. Well, there you can, yeah, I don't even know, is that one in it? I don't remember which is that you have more than is probably in the in the magazine, and the magazine is of course in the first issue where I I put well my explanation my my fury my protest against this situation is people that uh, expelled the other situation is people was was in handwriting and drawing and so on, but it's definitely your part which is. Um, uh, I don't know why there is something very strange with my name. Could that go off, please? Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Um, thank you very much. And then, I mean, in a way, it's also very, um, very funny to have done this in a, the, the, talking about misunderstanding here and contra ideas, contra contradictions. Uh, you can you can read it a little bit. I, I really wonder if this part is in it. I mean, it was done in a in a, in a really in a very protest sort of mood, and um, I did it also on purpose so that it could hardly be read. There were only you could hardly read it. Or anyway, the bar and concert over Kotani, who later on turned out to be a sort of very very wrong person, almost fascist. Um, very bad idea to take him in. Uh, anyway, this made this made the complete, uh, well, uh, clear. Well, you can see the word protest also. It made it so very clear that I would never ever be able to to get back to the situationist movement. I was really literally expelled. But that's not so important. And then I asked Noel Arnaud, who was originally, well, who was a, a pathophysician, but who was also the secretary of the painter Du Buffet. And he was a lot of other things. He had all sorts of different identities, but he had made a magazine in directly oh, after the second. Good, good. Hiya. You got these waxy rubber cement. Waxy cars. rubber yeah. weird things. Amazing American character. Sorry. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, right. thank you. Do you want us to you want to open it or check it out? Uh, yeah, yeah, let me just check it out. Okay. All right. I don't understand. What are you doing? Are you telling about what's happening? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> there are two more of you um, on here. I'm just yeah, there, I'm, 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 that's my protest. I'm going on and on and on, and in the end, we'll have, <laughs> I don't know what is going on. I think I have the one muted that was talking. So um, well, we'll go back to the share screen now. Uh, okay. Um, we were talking about, still about the movement, the situation is, but perhaps it's a little bit too long, it gets boring. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I get all sorts of messages. Um, well, anyway, this is, I was talking about Arnaud and Arnaud for me was the right person to, to do, to start the, the Situationist Times with because he had made the uh, Surrealisme Révolutionnaire magazine, which only existed of one number, which was a very important um, in, in, in the avant-garde art world. Um, uh, magazine coming out in Belgium, but it had it was completely international. Of course, that was one of the things which I thought was important, and it came out directly after Second World War in '46, and it ev had even people like the man who later on made Memphis uh, Sotsas in it, and um, and people like Henri Cobay. It was very much also with the. Uh, movimento nuclear, which, uh, well, it goes too far to mention all these things, which were in the early 50s. And I had heard of those and I knew a little bit of it. So I asked that no, and here he makes a letter. And it's a letter I think Kevin likes very much. It's not my choice because mm -hmm. I mean, how? <laughs> I, I think it's a bit funny, but anyway, it's very dear. Um, and there you see number two of the Situationist Times doesn't only talk about Spur and the Spur process and all that happened around Spur. And so my article on the, the political, uh, well, whatever. Um, but in the second one, we did it, we made it in Belgium together with um, a Belgian photographer, uh, Serge van der Kam. And on the left side, the one that says sucre is Noël Arnaud, and I say deux sucre. And then the other Belgium say a half a sucre, and the other one says three sucre, and so we go on. And this is the dérive we made in Belgium, and which is cut in half in the magazine. And this the dérive, there you can see it, dérive de Polydor, 
Bouffieu, and Polydor was, of course, the big cyclist who has been honored up to today. And there was at the same moment a protest of farmers. And there you can see the little forks sticking out and everywhere there were these forks. And um, it's about, uh, about work and liberty, uh, liberty. Um, and here you see also the way I wanted the magazine to be. And that was with music, architecture, whatever in it. So all the aspects of creation should be in my magazine. At that moment, still our magazine was no allowed no. So that was uh, Van der Kam, who was the photographer? Serge Van der Kam, who was a painter and a photographer. So did you know that we have his papers also with yours at Beinecke? Yes, he definitely does, but he doesn't live anymore. No, no, his papers, his archive is at Beinecke. So your archive his archive, there. I don't yeah. know. No, no, I have no idea where I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. I lost it's, Jacqueline. Oh. It's at it's at Beinecke. I acquired it a couple of years ago. So oh, really? You're both I there together. <laughs> so they're together. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. I mean, you're really able to get that all families together, <laughs> all the counterculture in the world. And well, this is much later. There we are not yet, because at the Derive we are in 62, but I talk much too much. Here we are in 62, um, the second one. This is in 68, where I you saw uh, the first image we saw, actually, which is the poster, that I'm on a, on a print machine, and it's a li Lino printer. And I made one in 68, May 68. I was one of the people that made the, the posters. And one of my posters is, well, the one the, on the right side. How can I explain? On the right side, up the top one with um, little people. Yeah, that, that one is mine. And this is um, put on the wall at the uh, Ecole de Beaux-Arts, where they all were gathered. We had to bring all our posters there. And then they were, um, well, this displayed in, in the whole of Paris. Um, they are the, yeah, well, there you see, I'm at the, at the printer, at the Lino printer. And I did it together with three Argentine um, artists. And there is one more where we, well, which was one of the others, and then you can perhaps show the posters I made. And yeah, and that I would like to mention the thing which is very interesting, which has been very interesting to me. Here you see the texts of the posters. We were obliged to use the texts exactly like the UNEF, the, the students want, uh, wanted us to do the six, May 68 posters. And of course, we didn't want to do that. So I, had them just covered partly and only used a bit. Then you had the own text made by Jorn. Well, that's the one which was on the other image, but perhaps we can go back to the for the other image because yes, the, the black and white one is uh, one of the situationist posters. And that is very interesting because all the other posters, posters which you could see on the big wall at the Beaux-Arts, uh, in, most of them are in color, all are figurative. They're all, of course, they all have texts, but there's all, always figuration. And I find it remarkable that the real situationist posters are only typography. You can only see letters and uh, of course, very important texts and very typical texts, which are very good, but they're also in a way much and much, I mean, visually much more interesting than the posters we made. The posters we made have this, well, let's say interpretation. Well, they give clearly what it is about. I much, <laughs> yeah, here you see, I mean, it's illustration in a way, it's narrative. While the situation is posters um, are very clearly the text and nothing else than the text. Of course, it's a different way of 
looking at, at what, how do you make a protest? But it's very clearly very important, I think. Um, there's one more, if you could go to the next one. I don't know if it's there. Yes, this one is very typical. That was made by Alejandro Marcos, one of my colleagues and friends who, who also used the press. You can see it also on the paper. This one is also at Banneke. And there you see Université Populaire, oui, and uh, non to the Université Bourgeoise, so the, <laughs> which means the public, uh, yes, to the public, the, well, the popular invitation and, and, uh, <laughs> university. And you see this bourgeois, I don't know if he is supposed to be a professor, with all the paper rolls in it. I think it's quite funny, but also it gives the indication of, yes, again, an image, but also very tough texts. And next to it, there are the magazines that came out and the Observateur is of course, um, just uh, the, the paper, the weekly that showed what was going on. I think we have to go to the next one. Well, this is a bit later. That's one of my paintings. I made quite some diptychs with diaries on the left side and images on the right side. And this is a diary without a diary, just before I made the diaries. And that is, of course, um, well, Vietnam War in the top. Football, that's very obvious. And... Um, well, we could say black power, <laughs> which it is, of course, it's very much black power. Um, I think it's, well, it's chosen by Kevin as one of the images I sent. Um, and these paintings at that moment I made, they look very primitive, but they're not supposed to be. It's a way, it's a tricky way that I, I try to paint them in that way. Um, and they are really uh, uh, obvious, uh, engaged political illustration of the, what the actuality from that moment. So this is much, much later, that's quite recent, a protest, a very big protest that went on in, um, in Copenhagen in 2000, I think it's six, um, against the uh, tearing down of the Ungdomshuset, uh, which means the young people's house. And there was a very um, multicultural performance uh, building where lots of things were happening. And the whole town of Copenhagen, all young people mostly, were very much protesting. And it, and it really got down because it's not there anymore. And what the, and I participated in it, in it partly, only some days, because there was a, a symposium in which I, well, which had also to do with this. But the important thing was that as it was torn down, they decided, the same people that were protesting against it, decided to make from this place where nothing was any longer a garden. And a really a big fetch garden and a very big garden. I mean, it was quite a big place. And then the police came and took all the, all the the um, trees and 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 whatever the vegetables which were already going to be put in, and all the seeds and the whole garden was taken away. And there we tried to get them off the. Uh, no, to get to get them to save them and get them in another place and then bring them at night back to this garden. And so this went on for at least a week. Whenever the police came and took them away, we first took them, or we, they first took, got them off, also while the police was there, and put them on in the, in the night. But at the same moment, they did, the same people did something which I thought was absolutely genial, very situationist like. They had a street, the street where this building was on. They had the name of the street printed and put on all the 
streets around this place. And I, actually a whole big quarter of the whole town had the same name. So I arrived and took a taxi to get there and I mentioned where I had to go. But then the taxi chauffeur didn't know Copenhagen very well. Then he said, but the streets have all the same name and he couldn't find the place because wherever you looked, the street had the same name. And that is another action, which was fantastic because it made a complete confusion in the town. It was a very good protest. And also that one got torn off by the police and by, I mean, by the officials and put on again in the night. So this is one of the last protests physically I've been participating with. Um, then we get to quite another chapter. Um, I think we're going very fast. I had after number six of the Situationist Times made that I got bankrupt or more or less bankrupt. I had much later an idea uh, to use the, um, not only the term, but also the item of topology, which I had used very much already in number two of the Situationist Times, which was originally the idea to do much more on it with, um, by Oscar Jorn, my partner then, and he made really very, very important things on the, on the mathematical part of topology. So I thought also, in a way, um, in, you could say in his honor, I wanted to make a magazine, well, actually a situation is times, really based on topology. And the most topological um, game I could find, of course, many games have topological aspects, but the most closed in topological one I could find was the pinball machine. And that was in 1970 when I had left Jorn, but I was living in Amsterdam, okay, not 71. Um, and at that moment, uh, pinballs, pinball machines were very popular by very few people in, in, in Amsterdam, in Holland. Um, they became during I think until 73 or the end of 73, they became more and more popular. So you saw more and more uh, pinball machines get coming into cafes and uh, societies and well, um, and also public places. Like apparently, Kevin, you have been learning playing pinball in, in a big public place that we never went to. But then I just thought this is a fantastic thing to make a situation as times on. So we made real research for two, two and a half years, almost three years on whatever has had to do with pinball machines and wanted a mathematician to write on it. That actually never happened, but there was, a, there was a psychologist, there was a psychiatrist, there were many architects. Well, it became again, the sort of participation as the situation is times. And I've completely forgot about the whole collection we had together, which was going to be number seven of the Situationist Times. And um, I really hope that one day it will be also in New Haven at the Beinecke, um, what is left of it, but I forgot about it. They all put it into a box and forgot about the box. But then I was um, some years ago in, uh, in Boston, I was at Harvard and at the MIT, and suddenly I saw this, I was together with a friend, a professor, and I saw this incredible machine, which was a digital pinball machine. And that triggered me, and I thought, pinball, pinball, digital pinball, it looks like a completed topological thing, and it really worked, and we tried it. And then I said, but my God, I still have this complete collection to make a magazine, uh, uh, which of course, it, I think it was 2016, might have been 16 or 17. And then I said, instead of making a magazine, I told it that uh, uh, when there was a symposium in Oslo, I told it 
to the public and to Elif who had arranged the symposium and said, well, let's make a situation this times in a completely different way. Let's just make exhibitions with it. And, and he did, I didn't do it, he did. The only thing I did, my participation is the wallpaper which is actually not exactly, I wanted fluorescent, but the wallpaper is my part and all the ideas, and of course, all the material has been in this exhibition. And that has been a traveling exhibition, which started in Oslo with a fantastic book, um, which is called These Are Situationist Times and given out Torpedo, and that book is absolutely wonderful. And also a website, which they have, which they have made, which is very interesting. And you can see it when you look at the book. I hope the book is um, to be seen at Banneke, I don't know. And for example, all the magazines have these screens and you can see each image of the magazine. Um, and Elif made me, talk during a week about all the magazines and page for page is on screen um, about the magazines. Not of course of the number seven because the number seven is the compilation of the whole uh, pinball research. And then this exhibition went to uh, Oslo to then to Malmö, to the Kunsthalle, then to Silkeborg, and then um, after that in 2019 to Stelic Museum. And it went, the part of this, of the pinball, when, although the exhibition was called Pinball Visit. Um, and this part is in a playground for the children, which is in the State Museum in Amsterdam. Sorry, I forgot to say Amsterdam. And there you see the kids playing, not only the kids, also teenagers and fathers. And, and the one we saw before was made by an artist. And he used this one, he used two silk screens, which I made in 73, same time when we made the research on pinball, which you can't see really now, but I, I mean, that's okay. So then, and this is the last, that's last year. It was postponed all the time because of COVID, of course, in Paris at Tres. And it was one of the few things when it opened, I think it was in January that it opened. And when it opened, apparently everything was closed in Paris. I never saw the exhibition, but there you see all the material, which would have been a magazine, but wow, well, instead of that, it became just exhibitions and um, I must say that well that's go, going a little bit too fast I'm afraid um, this this last uh, um, exhibition of the um, the pinball uh, what's it called well the pinball visit is was very very well done by Tres and at the right moment because there was nothing going on no one you could Nothing was open, and so people at least had something, and they also had a pinball, and people came tens of times just to play the pinball, because there are not many pinballs left in Paris, while well, it always was a very popular thing in cafes, and you couldn't go to cafes during COVID. So at least you could go there and play pinball. Um, so this, yeah, and there, it's a complete different chapter, and that is what is going on now at uh, in New York at Ortosa Projects. And um, that is a series of paintings I made, paintings and wild well, paintings. Let's let's just call them paintings on refugees, and it's called they are called borderline. And that's about well, it's very obvious. Uh, it's a sea watch, and this is another boat. There are the boats which try to save the people that are on the other boats. And if you look well, you see some drawn boats. What happened two weeks ago? People on, in the water, which are drawn, of course. Um, and this is one of the dramas uh, in Europe. But I mean, coming from Africa and coming from 
Afghanistan now and coming from Iraq, it started with Idlib and Moria with the big fire and it's all the drama, the actual drama, um, which makes um, the biggest protest, should make the biggest protest in the world at this moment, apart from, of course, climate protest. I, in my option, it's one of the most cruel things that are happening. And this, this is on uh, on show, right? This is a show. This is on show. This is at the moment in New York on show. Yes, it's still on show until um, I think mid mid January, or perhaps the first week of January, and um, there has been a very. Uh, well-written article, big article in uh, New York Times about about this. Okay, and that is the actuality. Okay, so we have about um, 10 or 15 minutes left for questions um, uh, from the rest of you out there. Um, if you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A. I see some questions starting to appear there. Um, I wasn't able to check the chat before. Um, uh, because it would interfere with the slideshow. So um, now I can take a look there to just see if there's anything there. But um, looks like we have some questions um, already in the chat. Um, the first one, um, I'll just read this to you, uh, Jacqueline, and then you can respond to it. Um, uh, it says, uh, when you resigned uh, from the SI in 1962, because uh, it did not accept the way the German section, also known as Gruppe Spur, had been expelled. You stated that people should act as situationists. Um, uh, and there's a quote from Monoscope, uh, which is a website, uh, what she's referring to there. So my question is, what uh, act? Uh, what does it mean to act as a situationist? And how to act as a situationist then and now? when old fascisms and authoritarianisms are renewed both in the North and the, in the South and the North. Um, so, and this question is coming from someone in Brazil too, I should tell you. So did you get the question, Jacqueline? Yes, I did get the question, but first of all, um, I have to protest because I didn't resign at all. I was expelled. <laughs> uh, that's quite a different thing. And um, if, it is, it, it, if it is a situationist act to get expelled, I don't know, but it is definitely, uh, um, uh, let's say, not a very solidary act to uh, expel people uh, and artists that have for un, un, um, unacceptable reasons, because it was ridiculous, this story about uh, the, the uh, uh, well, the collector who was a capitalist, and of course the collector was a capitalist, otherwise he couldn't have bought uh, art. But um, the, the, the point is, of course, it's fascist uh, to expel people, but I mean, it would, uh, I wouldn't say that there was any fascist act, act done by the Boer and Consort and the people uh, around him, Van Agam and Kotani. Kotani was, in a way, in the, well, at least Jorin said he was a fascist. But I mean, I, I, can't, I can't prove that. But you can't compare this in any way to what is happening in the North and the South at the moment. The movement of the Situationist, the Situationist movement was um, uh, an international movement, but not, it looked, very as a very strong movement, but at that time it was not a strong movement at all. And they didn't have the power to, and they, we didn't have the power to be more, um, uh, let's say, politically engaged than we were. I mean, it's complete a counterculture movement, or it was completely a counterculture movement, and definitely not from any, from any fascist ideas only the um, well unacceptable way of getting rid of all the creative people to get into the political social political position uh, to me had a, a tendency which at that time I, it, I had to protest against I don't know if it's an answer 
Yeah, I think I think what she was maybe trying to ask was how can uh, acting in a situationist way today fight against the um, the, well, it, the 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 authoritarian regimes that are emerging now. Um, sort of, you know, asking you to compare, you know, um, resistance to um, capitalism, say, in the in the 1960s um, and and bourgeois society to to um, to to the situation today that you, um, yeah, you I, can't. I'm sorry to say, but you can't. I mean, the situation is movement doesn't exist anymore and there are no ideas in the movement that could act against this fascist movement. I, I, I wouldn't be, I mean, I wouldn't know any, I mean, derive détournement and, and, and psychogeography do not exactly uh, help anything against strong movements like going on now. And there was the, the, the playful part in the situationist movement, which should be recognized also, and not only this political part. I mean, this is too politicized. It is not a... It has never been, apart from perhaps in 68, but that was not only the situationist movement, it was the initiator, you could say. And it gave, it gave part, but it was one of the initiators. It's, it was a much stronger movement. And you, to fight against those, you have to have much stronger ideas. And no, not only ideas, but much stronger program than the situationist had. Okay, so the next question, uh, I would like to follow up on that, but I, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I okay. want to ask the questions that people have um, here. Um, uh, uh, the next question is, uh, what would you say was the most essential contribution Jorn made to the Situationist Movement? Jorn made? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, might have been the idea to do the research on topology. And then in his work as a painter, I think the modifications are the most near to situationist ideas. I mean, that's detournement that has to do, but yes, I could ask you, Kevin, what do you think was his most important contribution? I mean, he was much more than only a situationist. Mm -hmm. Well, he certainly was also someone who brought all these people together. I mean, if the situation is international was international. I think um, that was largely yeah, yeah. Pastor Yorn. Um, I see several people raising their hands. Um, as I wrote in the chat and said at the beginning, please, if you have questions, um, put them in the Q&A. I'm not able to, um, uh, I'm not able to unmute people. Um, it's just one of the limitations of this, uh, this format, but um, please feel free to put your questions in the chat or not in the chat, I mean, in the Q&A instead, if you have a question. Um, so the next question is uh, from uh, Jana Schoenberger, um, uh, oh. <laughs> who, who is with us today and asks, she says, first of all, thank you for your excellent presentation, Jacqueline. Could you speak I about your process of making your new work, the work on view in New York now? Do you source material, for example? Um, yes, of course I do. And I, of course, it's very much influenced by what I find in newspapers, but also what I see on television. And I mean, it's all the actuality, which comes from all sides um, that I use as material. And I really literally use them um, to make the, that's also why the, the, the ships are the ships which you might recognize, you know? which you can see, we, everyone, we all can see it. And I must say, I stopped um, recently, well, half a year ago. I did this, all, all of them, which are in the exhibition <clears throat> in the last two COVID years. And um, the material is the material which alas, we can see daily. And uh, it's absolute, uh, and of course I have my interpretation and my fantasy and I don't, I mean, they are not protest works and I can't even say they're engaged, but they're just, I just want to make them and I, I want to go on. I mean, this, what is going on in Belarus and what is, I mean, there's so much going on still that there is so much to tell. Um, and I, I mean, it is my, my craft is 
to paint. So that's the way I express it. But it's very personal, of course, the interpretation. But it is definitely material from daily material. Thank you, Jana, for asking. Um, <laughs> uh, OK, here's another question for you. How would you like your legacy uh, to be as a painter, as an artist, as a situationist, or as something else? Well, not something else, everything together. <laughs> and I think, um, uh, well, the fact that I have the honor to have my archive at the Beinecke is one of the very, one of the most marvelous ways of putting together the legacy. I don't want to be anything else than what I have been <coughs> in the last 60, 70 years. Oh, Seth is a bit exaggerated. I didn't start at 12 making these things, but it's, I'm very happy I'm here to tell about my legacy to be. And I'm, well, I have to say thank you, Kevin, also to be here at this very moment and talking about it, because it, it, it is a long way. And I'm sorry that if I say I can't do with this legacy, it's not possible to do anything against all the fascist and all the very important, it's not only fascist, but all the very important items that are at this moment at in our lives. And I would really rather be happy to help younger people to think in a way like this, the start of the situationists was. Could you just say a little more about that? Because, um, you know, this is a series where we're uh, sort of, you know, uh, looking at not only contemporary, but historical, but mainly contemporary young people who are trying to uh, use creativity um, and play and, and anger, you know, all sorts of emotions uh, and art in order to, you know, really make a difference. Um, and it seems like, um, you know, the moment in the situation is international that we started with, uh, with, uh, with the, the group of Schwur and the expulsion, the expulsions and all of that was a very important moment. But before that, um, I mean, the situation, it seemed like art had some, some kind of potential to, to be revolutionary, right? Or at least to, um, to, 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 to try to make a statement and, and change the world. Um, is, that, is that what you were saying by the early years? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that was the reason why I wanted to participate in the, in the movement. I mean, I, 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 when I was 18 years old, I started already uh, being more, being alert, well, alert about, about movements that like Dada had also this impact the movements that had a part of changing the world and changing the ideas of the world and getting to, well, the, of course, there have been many movements in art, <coughs> also in, in, in the Soviet Union or before the Soviet Union. I mean, all over the world, there has, have always been movements trying to change the world into a better world. But this illusion of artistic movement changing the world into a better world is one of the most difficult things. And the, well, we could say that it's perhaps one of the most um, ludic, <laughs> or more ludens, uh, the playful things also. Uh, with the, one of the people in the Situationist movement was Constant, who had also been in the in the Surrealism Revolutionnaire, like Dautremont had been, I mean, already that in 46 was a movement, an international movement. Actually, there are always international movements, otherwise you can't change the world, that's an evidence. I mean, it's, it has to be global to be changed. And, these, and, and he made, he wanted to change the world in a, well, in an urbanistic way. And, and he wanted to change the, the, the architecture of, of, of living uh, constant it. Uh, that's one aspect, but I mean, let's put it that way that you're with 10,000 years of, of vandalism wanted to change it to a 
10,000 years, go back to 10,000 years of research of what had been changing the world. And the world had been changing all this even much longer than 10,000 years, but in the situation is moving. There was a sort of compilation of international thoughts, um, much also in the magazine, much written about, but never anything was realized. I mean, even the idea, which was very much constant, idea, although he had been expelled, but or, or perhaps he resigned, that is not known what happened. But one of the ideas was to make an island, a cetocratic island, and that cetocratic island was going to be paid actually, because he said he was going to finance it the same, by the same collector, Marinotti, Paolo Marinotti, who was the reason why the Gruppe Spur got expelled, and who was the one who was the big capitalist. He was going to make our cetocratic um, uh, island. And there, there became a little bit of a conflict because the boys wanted to make constructions and urbanism that could be destroyed the day they were built. I mean, that's anarchism in a way, which, well, you can accept, but which is very unpractical. And mainly when a, a person like Marinotti is going to, to finance this island, which of course we got the island, we never got it, but he got it. And he said, we, he gave it to us. But of course, practically, it never, it ne never came off. We, we, I've never seen it. I only saw it on paper. But I mean, this sort of illusions were the, the playground of the situationist movement, you could say. But also, um, where do we find the first, uh, um, I don't know, perhaps, Kevin, you know, the first thing that really had been realized were the films of the war and and the because they they were done but of course they were paid by Jorn who was paid by Marinotti and so it goes on and on and it makes it all very absurd but I still do believe that um, it should go on I mean the idea should go on and I think young people please use your art also to make counterculture and whatever, well, perhaps that's my legacy. So I hope that young people or anyone, I mean, anyone in the world tries to go on with ideas like we had, if it is Socratic or the films, then you have to look at the films to borrow made, which I think they're remarkable, they're fantastic. I mean, and even perhaps even a little bit, the, the strange paintings of borderline I try to make now, it, it gives hope, at least as it go on and be, be open for everything that might change. And of course, in the positive way. Thank you for that. Um, I have one time for one last question. We're really coming up against four o'clock, but um, question from Laura Wexler, who's um, a professor here at Yale and says, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Do you think websites um, could make another situationist times kind of thing possible made by young people? Or does the structure of the internet diffuse such politics? I think they could, absolutely, they should. We could say websites should do it. I mean, the, the big, big advantage, and we didn't mention that fact um, of the internet is that it's free, that it's possibility um, I always said that there shouldn't be, and I must say the situation is also on their magazine, there shouldn't be any restriction of, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, <laughs> toward the street, uh, the, 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 the author rights. Always, I gave away all author rights, also to, to Banneke, because um, that is one of the restrictions that could make that things are impossible. And with the internet, I think it's and I think it's possible to have the freedom to do it. The only thing is, the only danger there is, and then we could talk about trees that get cut out, that things in print on paper are so much more, well, um, 
I don't want to use the word beautiful, but they are so much more touchable. And um, the fact of touching things is one aspect which you can't do with the web, with the BBB, with the web. That's uh, one of the things about your archive that I love so much. It's so fun to touch the things in there. Exactly. Um, thank you so much, Jacqueline, for this. Um, and um, I just wanted to say, you know, that we're hoping that Jacqueline will be able to come uh, to Bainiki, um again sometime soon. Um, and uh, bringing with her um, uh, situation is times number seven, um, the pinball issue. And so maybe that would be a time when we could get together with students and talk about these things. Um, what a wonderful session today. Um, I learned so much and uh, it was really very inspiring to hear you talk about what art can do and, and to hear about all the things that you've done, Jacqueline. Um, I'm getting thanks from a lot of people um, already for your for your session today and for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much. We will be in touch very soon. I hope we can Zoom again in the next week or so um, and talk some more. Um, but for now, um, we're already over time. So I'm going to end the session for today and by thanking you all and wishing everyone a wonderful, wonderful evening and a wonderful uh, a winter break and holiday. Thank you so much, Kevin, and thank you for listening to me. And I hope, I mean, we'll get together again. I see wonderful things you have been doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.